Coming up today on That LTD Life, I'm going to clone my voice, generate an animated short from a single sentence, and even add motion to a still photograph. And best of all, I'll show you how to do all these things for a one-time cost, not a monthly recurring fee. What's up, everybody? Dave here. And today we're looking at AppSimo's deal of the day. This is RealCraft, an AI tool that lets you not only clone your voice like you just heard, be good, right? It can also generate full on videos from a single prompt. I'm going to show you how it works and you can decide whether or not it's a good fit for your business. So here is AppSimo's deal of the day page. Currently, RealCraft is 69 bucks, but that price will not last long. So watch this video and decide whether or not it's a good fit and then head right over with my link in the description. By the way, this video is sponsored by AppSimo. So thank you very much to AppSimo for your support. All right, we're gonna get into the tool in just a second, but here are the plans and pricing. I wanna talk through one thing before we get into actually using the tool. There are four different tiers available. So with tier one, you don't get two features. You don't get white labeling. To me, that doesn't really matter for this tool, but you also do not get pro mode. And this is actually a very important part of using the tool. So I think for most people, you'll be better suited to say tier two or bust in my opinion. But if you use the tool a lot, you're definitely going to want to get a higher tier plan so you get more and more credits, more and more voices that you can clone. Yeah, overall, I think tier two is probably the starting point. And uh, if you're a power user, go to tier four. So here's the UI for RealCraft. I'm going to walk you through this real quick, and then we're going to get into what it's like to actually generate a video. So right now we're in the video screen, and that's where they start you off when you log in. There is a little switch right here for pro mode. I highly recommend leaving this on. What it does is after you enter in your prompt for your video is it walks you through the entire process. So you go through a scripting phase where you can edit the script. The script will be read by a narrated voice, by the way, and you can make that your own voice or they've got some good voices in here. And we'll get to that in a moment. After you do the scripting phase, then you go through a storyboarding phase where it actually generates a single image for each scene. And then it's going to use that to animate later on. So You'll have a script and then a storyboard. You can kind of see what the video is going to start to look like. You can add scenes, you can delete scenes. And then finally, when everything looks good, you click the generate video button and you actually get a full on video. So let's regroup. We start up here with our prompt. It can be as simple or as complex as you want. There's a 4,000 character limit. So you can go ahead and write a full on script if you'd like, or you can just say there are football players dancing like ballerinas in tutus and you get a video just the same. After your prompt, you decide whether you want to use pro mode or not. And then it says choose graphics type. You can either do 4K image or 4K animation. I recommend choosing 4K animation. By the way, HD Hyper, this is going to be reserved for a paid add-on. It's not included. It uses a different type of credits. So it's not included with our LTD. Next, there's the filter section. And this is where we can add in our background music. We can set a vertical video or a regular 16 by nine video, and you can choose your voice over here. I'm gonna open up this screen and let's listen to some of the built-in voiceovers. I will point out there are other languages available. I'm just gonna play the English ones for this video, but let's go ahead and check out Mary first. The greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. And James. The greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Now, these two voices are all language, so you could hear those same voices in any of these languages if you wanted. So that gives you a good idea if you're looking to generate content in another language. But there's some languages that are you know, specific or the, some speakers that are specific to a language. Like, here's Dave. We basically sound identical. Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Or Jessica. Don't settle for a relationship that won't let you be yourself. Okay, so you get the point here. These are all high quality voices, but what if you want to use your own voice? Well, that's down here, right here. It says upload your voice. Just drag and drop an MP3 file. It has to be under 10 megabytes and it'll go ahead and clone your voice for you and you're free to use it throughout your videos. Next up, we have content and this is the type of content that you're going to make is an explainer video, a story, historical video, travel blog, biography, or wishes and quotes. So Maybe something meant more for Pinterest. Do they have videos on Pinterest? I don't know. All right, the next section over is the style. This is gonna be more like the model or the output, the look of your video. So just look at the thumbnails and decide which one looks best to you. The ones with FL in the title, that stands for Flux. These are kind of the cutting edge technologies. These are really, really good looking models. So you might wanna check those out and see if they suit your tastes. 
after style is brand. And this is where you can upload your own logo. Let me show you. So we'll click here and I've got my logo added already. I'll click the pencil icon to edit it. Now, when you upload an image, it's just gonna make it really big. I feel like this is like a little warning label. They, they should have a warning label here. So it's gonna look like this when you upload it. I was like, okay, that's my logo, cool. And I just hit save and then moved on and generated a video. Well, it's actually showing you, this is where it's gonna display on the finished frame. So if you don't want your video to take up literally the entire screen, make sure you shrink it way, 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 way down and then place it wherever you want it to go, probably in the corner like that. You can also add an intro video or an outro video here. So if you wanna have a pre-recorded or pre-edited video spliced in or after your video, you can do that without needing to pull open another editor after the fact. And the last option over here is the visibility. Do you want it to be public or private? It is set to public by default, but after you generate a video on private, the next time you come to generate another video, it will be private. Okay, so that's how you create a video. Let me show you one of the videos I've got working in progress. For that, I'm gonna jump right over here to the dashboard. These are where your outputs live. And I've got two videos that I'm working on here. I'm gonna open up this one, Austin's Flavorful Ride. Okay, so this video started with a very simple prompt about walking down the streets of Austin, trying tacos. So there's a story section up at the top here, kind of giving you the general overview. And then there's the narration section, which is actually what's going to appear in the video. There's six scenes. You can see as I scroll left to right here, I could add in additional scenes or I could edit what the narrator is gonna say in any given scene right here. So at this point, I've not seen what my video looks like. Nothing is animated. I'm simply just planning it out. And if you notice, as I hover over things, we get the little cross out symbol. That's because I've already generated the video here. So I can't edit this, but I could clone it. Right up here is a clone button. I can clone this project. I can clone it with a different style or a different language if I wanted to. So lots of different options for iterating upon your content. All right, so we enter in our prompt, we get our script, and the next thing we see is our scene section. And our scene section is really just a sample of what the narration is going to sound like. So I can click on the play button here and hear just each individual scene from the narrator. Embarking on an Epicurean journey, we start at an iconic Austin food truck with its vivid neon glow. So here essentially we have one more opportunity to edit what the AI voiceover is going to sound like. This is important because maybe there are certain words that aren't going to be pronounced correctly. And so after you hear the AI say the word, you can go in and make any final adjustments. So this step is called scenes. And the next step is the storyboard. And this is where we can see each individual scene and we can hear the voiceover over that scene. So you can start to get a real feel for what this is gonna look like. So now I can click through each of the scenes and I get a pretty good feeling of what my video is actually gonna look like once it's animated. So at this point, I would click output video and finally I go to the output page here where I can actually watch my video. Let's check it out. Embarking on an Epicurean journey, we start at an iconic Austin food truck with its vivid neon glow. We savor a sumptuous brisket taco capturing Austin's culinary spirit, seasoned with fresh spices and avocado. Sixth Street unravels with street murals, lively tunes, and the thrumming heart of Austin's cultural spirit. We soak in the city's rhythmic street life, surrounded by artistic expressions and Austin's lively music traditions. As the sun sets, the Congress Avenue Bridge witnesses the day's culmination with the graceful flight of bats. All right, so pretty cool. If you've ever been to Austin, you'll know that all of those things are fairly accurate. And it really just started with an extremely simple prompt about walking down the street and eating tacos. Okay, just a few more things here. Let's go over to the studio section. Here you can generate images just like you would do with Dolly or you know any uh, Mid Journey or any, any of the uh, tools like this. I made a few images up here. You can see my sumo wrestler over here eating tacos. Well, you're supposed to be watching YouTube on their laptop, but it actually looks like he's eating the tacos on the laptop itself. But Still pretty high quality output. Uh, I, I would redo that one again until it got it right, of course. Then there's this one right here. This is supposed to be a comedian on stage in a trendy club getting a big laugh. So it's a person smiling, not right on the nose, but overall, again, the output looks really nice. Here's a little boy playing drums with a rock band on a stage in a st sold out stadium. That looks pretty good. And the last one is a blue nose pit bull running through a lush green park after a ball. Looks pretty good as well. And you can just kind of scroll through here. And once again, these are gonna be the best of the best types of generations. So overall, some very interesting AI art if you're into that.
When generating an image, we do have the same options in terms of whether it's going to be 16 by 9 or 9 by 16. We can choose our style just like we saw before and set the visibility to be private if you choose. So this is the generate image section of the studio, but there's also text to speech. And that's how I made that clip at the beginning of this video. So you can literally just type anything you want, choose the voice that you'd like it to be read by, and then go ahead and generate. It does have a limit here of 500 characters, but that's a pretty decent amount. So just go ahead and generate multiple clips if you need something a little bit longer. And the last part of the tool I'm gonna show you is the animate image. I took this photo that I grabbed off of Google of Mike Tyson and Jake Paul in their infamous boxing match from uh, about a week ago, and I uploaded it to the tool and asked it to make it so they both just kind of sit down. And here's what it did, and they just kind of tap gloves. So it's a lot like the actual boxing match itself. Unfortunately, uh, they did not sit down. I asked them to sit down for tea, but they didn't do that. By the way, all of the things you're uploading, like your voiceover, your images, any of the background music you upload, that's all gonna live over here in assets, which means you can easily reuse it in other projects if you need to. And of course, if you wanna clear off some space, you can head over to your assets and just click the little trash can and stuff will disappear. All right, so that is real magic. Remember, this is the deal of the day, which means it's going to expire soon. Click my link in the description if you wanna pick it up. Let's end this video by checking out the history of the internet. My name is Dave. Thank you for watching. Leave me a comment down below and I'll see you in the next review. In the 1960s, amidst the tension of the Cold War, a remarkable invention was taking shape. The ARPANET, the precursor to the internet. Developed as a means to ensure communication during a nuclear attack, ARPANET marked the birth of networked communication technology. As peace dawned, the internet took on a broader role. The late 1980s saw the introduction of the World Wide Web. As we moved into the 21st century, the internet began to permeate all aspects of our lives, becoming a tool for communication, study, business, and entertainment. Today, the internet, once a military project, has enveloped the globe, connecting billions and making the world a smaller place.